Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm painting See, Hear, Speak, No Evil. <laughs> I'm sipping on my pumpkin spiced coffee. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so what we're going to be using for our materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, chrome orange, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, and chrome yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a little fly around me that's bothering me. Sorry. For my tools today, I'm going to be using three brushes from my personal personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout the painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of the paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free, a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for our pumpkins and our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black and orange. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint my background first, but while doing that, I'm gonna be drawing an outline for my stack of pumpkins. You could certainly make your pumpkins, you could turn your canvas like this and put three pumpkins next to each other. You could put them sporadically throughout the canvas. I'm just gonna stack mine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of draw an outline similar to a snowman. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with some black paint on my brush. I'm gonna come up from the top of my canvas, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. And then I'm just gonna give myself these three bumps coming down the right hand side. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. You can make them, I think I want this one a little bit further in, you could make them similar, you could make the middle one bigger or smaller, whatever you want to do for your size of your pumpkins is completely fine. I'm just going to take this and bring it in something like this. And then the only one that I'm going to say do something different is this bottom one. You kind of want it to be more on the flat kind of on a flat surface so it's not too um, round and wobbly looking. And then once you've got that outline, all you need to do is color in this exterior with black paint. And if you wanted to, you could certainly reshape your pumpkins along the way, but I'm just gonna kind of go with whatever happens, happens. <laughs> and if they're, I don't need them to be perfectly round because pumpkins come in you know different shapes they can be bumpy they can be oblong they can be circular so whatever kind of shape you you want for your pumpkins is totally fine and black covers pretty well so as you're going through this background you you could really use any kind of brush stroke that you want and if for some reason after it dries if you've got a couple of little streaks you can just hit it with um with a, another coat of the black paint to get it nice and, 
and complete. And then I'm just going all the way around the canvas. You could even paint the uh, edges or the sides of your canvas on the exterior edges. That way your project will look nice and complete and it'll show that you paid the same amount of attention all around your project that you did in the front of it. So just a little bit of uh, attention being paid everywhere makes your project look nice and complete. So now that I've got my exterior painted, I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna paint the uh, pumpkins with just orange. And I know that this is just a base coat, so as I go through my, my coloring process of them, again, I don't need it to be perfect. It's gonna look streaky, and I may even run into some wet black paint around the edges, which I'm okay with because I'm gonna be putting some shadowing and stuff around the edges of my pumpkin anyway, so the um, if they blend in if those two colors blend in a little bit and even if I bring some of that black into the middle of my pumpkins it's gonna work out just fine again because this is just that base coat so I'm just kind of going around my edges I'm gonna bring it down here and again bumping into my my black works out just fine for me. It seems to work into my favor as I go to paint the rest of the details because bumping into that black, even if it's if it's wet, it'll just provide kind of like a softer edge to that pumpkin. If it's not wet, that's okay. You might just see it overlap a little bit, but I'd rather bump into my black and have it either blend or overlap and have to um, make little modifications later than to leave a visible gap between my, like I have a little gap between here, to leave a gap between here and here. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to have any vacant canvas. So I'd rather have those colors overlap and just um, make any adjustments necessary during the painting process. And then once we're done with this, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the dark areas or the shadows on our pumpkins. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, and orange. And I do recommend that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be adding shadows underneath each pumpkin, like right in this area, that's gonna show a little, it's gonna cast a little bit of shadow on the pumpkin beneath it. I'm also gonna be putting a little bit of shadow up top here where the stem is going to be coming out and then I'll, I'll put a little bit of a shadow coming up the bottom of the pumpkin so we can make a little bit of form out of our pumpkin so they look, start to look on the rounder side. I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush. I really don't need a lot. I have about um, almost equal parts of my brown and my black. I'm going to start up underneath here from corner to corner. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself kind of a flat type of ripply line to indicate the bottom of this pumpkin. So something like this. I want it to look like it would definitely kind of sit, be able to sit on there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and then I'm just gonna kind of rub this shadow down into the um, the pumpkin below it. So I'm just kind of dry rubbing this and just getting it to blend into the pumpkin right into here. And if it doesn't, if it's not perfect, it's okay because we're gonna be doing all kinds of other stuff to, to help along the process. So I'm gonna do the same thing in through here. So a little bit of black and a touch of, a little bit of black and a little bit of brown, both on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start over here again and then just kind of come out from this corner and then give myself a little, oops, I need a little bit more paint than that. <laughs> I was a little too cautious on that one. So I picked up a little bit more paint, gonna bring this in this direction in through here and then just kind of rub it into the pumpkin below it. And you could even, if you wanted to, you could even pick up a little bit of liquid medium or water to help the process along a little bit so it spreads out a little bit easier. But what I'm gonna do in a minute is I'm gonna be overlapping it with a little bit of my orange. So that's gonna help to provide um, 
a little bit better of a blend. I'm even kind of pulling out those little divots in the pumpkin um, texture, how it kind of gets bumpy. Now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, so I have brown and black a little bit, I'm gonna also pick up a little bit of orange. So this is gonna provide me the shadow at the bottom of my pumpkin. So I have orange, black, and brown, and I'm gonna take it from the bottom of my orange, or the bottom of my pumpkin, I had to reload a little bit more paint on there, and I'm gonna pull it up in what I'm gonna call the little dips <laughs> in, the, in the divots of my, of my pumpkin. So this way it looks like it's got almost those grooves of sorts within the pumpkin. You can even bring it up on these sides so they end up looking a little, like it's got a little bit of form around those edges so the edges aren't too, too bright. So you can do any combination of your orange, black, and brown in order to get these um, kind of markings in place. And once you've got them in there, just reload your brush with orange paint and you can uh, finish or put a second coat on the entire orange with your dirty brush. So you're in essence kind of pulling a little bit of that um, dirtier type of a color or the darker tones or notes into that pumpkin and you can even bring it up into here if you feel if you felt that that didn't blend as much as you wanted so I'm gonna repeat that process on my next pumpkin going up so a tiny bit of orange black and brown are all three on my brush and I'm incorporating the orange so it looks a little bit lighter than that shadow that we put underneath so orange black and brown. I'm going to go down the bottom of that pumpkin and then just kind of pull it up in these curved type of almost um, streaks. And I don't necessarily need to do too much, just enough to make that look like the bottom of the pumpkin. And then again, once I've got it on pretty good, I pick up more orange on my brush and get it to blend in with that middle of the pumpkin. And it will help those colors uh, just start to talk to one another and make it look like they're really all just kind of merging together. And again, these edges, if you need to do anything with maybe a little bit of black or brown just to get them to kind of uh, work with that background, that, that helps. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one up and through here. So orange, brown, and black, just a little bit of each to get my shadow going at the bottom of my pumpkin and then just bringing it up in these curved type of ways. So on the left, uh, I curve to the left, and on the right, I curve to the right. And in that center, I kind of do a transitional type of curve that might even go kind of up the center of my pumpkin. So something like that. I need a little bit at the, the tippy top, so I just am gonna rub in a little dark spot up in through here, and then I can just pull it out like this. Now I'm gonna pick up more orange on my dirty brush and repeat what I did on the other pumpkins. And then once I've got this in here, I am going to be using my small brush for the next step. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got a nice second coat on my pumpkin. And you could certainly do another layer once you've got, oh, actually, no, we're gonna use this large brush for the next step, sorry. <laughs> My, my brain went to somewhere else, but we're using this large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to paint the light areas on our pumpkins and the reflection on the ground. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. Again, I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding lighter tones to the canvas or to the pumpkins in order to get them to pop out a little bit more. So we'll be using orange, yellow, white, and I may use a little bit of brown too so the color is not too vibrant and fluorescent type of looking. Uh, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of a reflection on the surface that the pumpkins are sitting on so that will ground them and make them look like they're not floating. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with adding the highlights on the pumpkins up and through here. The trick to doing this is you don't necessarily need a ton of paint on your brush. If you have a lot of paint, what you're gonna end up doing is kind of painting over everything that you've already done. So just build it lightly in small layers. I'm gonna start with a touch of orange, yellow, and white on my brush. And just a little bit of each color will work. And I'm gonna 
be doing it in the same type of brush stroke that I started, that I did my last go around in, which is going to be kind of these curved type of brush strokes. And I'm going more towards the um, center of the pumpkin as well as the top area of this one in through here. So just reloading with a little bit of orange, yellow, and white. And I will most likely be using these three colors on my brush for this entire um, highlight area, but in different intensities. Sometimes I might have a little bit more white on my brush. Sometimes I might have a little bit more yellow on my brush, but those three colors are going to be the colors that are going to help me through this process of putting a highlight on here. And again, hardly any paint. So that way, if I want it brighter, I can just kind of bring in a little bit more brightness. My paint underneath will dry nice and quickly for me. And then I can just steer it and bring it down into, um, get it to blend with those colors underneath or down below. So I'm going to repeat that for the next one. So orange, yellow, and white and just a little bit of each on my brush at the same time. This one's got a little bit of shadow from here so I'm going to put my highlight somewhere in through here so just kind of starting it with these curved markers and then as I'm coming towards this right hand side I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot on these ones in through here because that top one might kind of take on the most highlight of them all, but I still want to add a little bit so it looks like they've got some shape. And if yours turns too yellow or too orange and you're not digging it, you can always counteract it. So if I wanted, maybe I pick up a little bit of orange and brown. If say, I feel like this is too much, I can pick up a little bit of orange and brown and just get it to blend in with it. So you can always counteract those colors and just enjoy the process. There's no two pumpkins that are exactly alike in this world, so you can really have fun with steering the different colors to it. So again, orange, yellow, and white are going back on my brush in a very little amount on my brush. And I'm just gonna kind of get this highlight to happen in this center region. And because I'm starting in the um, kind of middle of the pumpkin like this and just giving myself these curved lines, what I'm doing is I'm putting that as the brightest area and telling the viewer that that's where the pumpkin is popping out the most to the viewer and that's giving it lots of form and dimension. And then I would just kind of keep fiddling and tweaking. I just either adjust it with a little bit more orange or brown or wherever I feel the, the color shift should go. And then once I've got that done, that's looking pretty good. I might let it dry, and if there's any additional um, tweaks I wanna do, I'll do that after it dries. But right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on down to my uh, reflection. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush, and I'm gonna load my brush with orange paint. And again, I don't need a lot, just a little bit on my brush. I'm gonna have this reflection at the bottom of my canvas as the brightest and it's going to get darker and darker as it gets towards here. All I really need to do is kind of give the viewer the information that maybe this this surface is a little shiny of sorts. Maybe um, it's got the glow from the from the um, pumpkins that we're going to be putting in. Maybe that's allowing for a little bit of a shine on the surface of the the table or wherever it is. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put the essence of orange down in through here. Maybe I'll give it a little bit of a curve along the side so that makes it look like it's taken on the shape of the object above it. And the thicker your paint is, the brighter that orange is gonna look. So as I'm coming through this down below, if I need to add more orange paint so you can see it better, I certainly will. But I don't, again, need to do much at all. I'm just looking to give the illusion that there is a surface that this is sitting on. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away just get this in here <laughs> take out your uh small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the stem and the faces i'm going to be using my small brush the colors that i'm going to use are black brown orange yellow and white i'm using all of my colors what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a base coat for my stem 
and then I'll put um, some eyes and a mouth on this one. I'm going to put some eyes and a mouth on this one, and I'm just going to put some eyes on this one. And then we'll come back and put a little light inside of them, as well as a highlight or a little texture on our stem. So I'm going to start with a little bit of brown paint on my brush to put my stem in place. So as I put this stem in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enhance maybe this, if I feel the need to, this little shadow in here. And then I'm just pulling mine out in kind of a curved manner. Actually, I'm going to put a tiny bit of white on my brush too. I have brown and white so I can get a nice um, coverage over this place where the orange meets the black. So I just put a little bit of brown and white on my brush and this will give me a better coverage over that one spot and I'm just kind of putting it in a shape that I feel is kind of believable for a pumpkin stem. stem. We'll put a little bit more um, detail on it in a minute after it dries a bit so if you didn't get perfect coverage over this spot don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get, take care of that when we do a little detail. Now I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm going to put um, some facial expressions with black paint. I, I am just going to be using black paint for this with a tiny bit of water on my brush so I can get some nice clean lines. On this guy in through here, I'm just going to put a open mouth in like a oh my god kind of way. <laughs> so kind of just a sideways oval type of a shape. I'm going to color it in black paint and I'm just doing a thin coat of black because I know I'm going to be putting a light inside of these um, features or inside some of them. So I'm gonna put a light inside of this one. I'm gonna put a couple of fun little eyebrows in through here. So maybe just kind of push my brush and bring it up like that. And then push my brush and bring it up like that. And the eyes on this one don't necessarily matter. I'm gonna put them just in case a little piece of them shows through the fingers of my skeleton later, but I, they're really not totally necessary because you might cover them up 100% by your hands, but I'm gonna put them there just in case I have a little peekaboo spot from my fingers. So now on this one down here, I'm gonna put some eyes. I'm gonna just do some nice generic triangle type of eyes, kind of off to like at a little bit of a tipped angle and again I'm going to put some um, lights inside of these. You could really do any kind of um, expression on your pumpkin faces that is funny or you know cool to you. You can really just make any type of expression that you want. Um, there are lots of examples that you can find on the internet of ways to that people carve their pumpkins so you can use that as ideas or you can you know, go with what I'm doing. I mean, he's got crooked eyebrows. I'm going to do a fun, um, just kind of jagged mouth to make it look like, you know, a homemade kind of <laughs> one that we, I think, are all pretty familiar with the jagged mouth representation <laughs> on uh, jack-o'-lanterns. But again, make yours into whatever you want. Maybe you want yours to be more grimacing looking or funnier or maybe you want yours to look like a specific person whatever works for you. I'm making this mouth kind of um, wide so I can have a little bit of a um, light inside of it so I just kind of made those lines a little bit wider. It looks pretty good and then I'm going to go ahead down here and I'm going to do two more um, triangle eyes at maybe different angle than those ones were at and again Maybe you want one of yours to be, you can have circular eyes, you can have square eyes, whatever is, is fun for you. Maybe you did a jack-o'-lantern this holiday season and you, and you want yours to look just like that. So feel free to, to customize these. And then once I've got this done, this one does, ne does not need a mouth because I know my mouth or I, you know, you, my mouth will be covered by that hand. So I'm just going to put a couple of eyebrows in through here. And now that I've got that on there, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a little light inside these um, 
these pieces. Well, actually, before I do that, let me do my stem up top so these get, have a little bit longer to dry. So my stem up top, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint to give myself a little bit of a um, kind of a more shadow going into the pumpkin in through here. And then what I can do is I'm gonna just kind of pull it up in these kind of curved type of lines on the bottom side of that stem so that's going to give it a little bit of dimension now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up um i'm going to show you a, a really cool custom color here i'm going to show you a custom green made with black and yellow so i have a tiny bit of black on my brush and if you have like a chrome yellow like this if you put a little bit of black in it it turns into this really vibrant green <laughs> so i'm going to take this oops that was a little bit too much black just want to make more so you guys can see what i'm talking about so there's my green i'm going to use that on my stem i got my custom green and i'm just going to incorporate just little kind of streaks of this in through here and then maybe a touch of white and brown just to give it a little extra bit of highlight up at the top so that was my custom green and then i'm just putting little bits of um, white up at the top and you can have your stem looking whatever way that you want but I'm thinking that that's pretty cool so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush I'm gonna start putting my lights on inside my jack-o-lantern I'm gonna start with a little bit of yellow on my brush I'm gonna start at the bottom of them and I'm just gonna rub up a little bit of this yellow so knowing what you know that it makes a yellow and black make green you might detect a little bit of a greenish hue so I'm gonna start with my yellow I'm gonna do that in all the little spots that I want my light to show so I've got my yellow at the bottom I'm rubbing it up like this I don't need to take up all of the area because I know that the light would be the brightest down at the bottom of that um, lantern so I'm gonna put it down at the bottom I'm gonna illuminate it a little bit more in a second but this is just the way I'm starting I got it on in through here as well so just my my yellow and if you bump into your um, jack-o-lantern the outside of it like I just did the skin of the pumpkin don't worry about it we've got a little highlight that we're gonna be doing around those in a little bit so we've got that and then I just got these two little eyes down here to go so just a little bit of my um, yellow is going on there a little bit on here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wipe my brush off and I'm going to pick up a touch of orange so I'm going to put a little bit of orange now into here to add a little bit more to that glow so just a little bit of orange when I'm doing these kind of glowing marks inside of things i'm just thinking of what are all the colors that i see in flames so i know that i see kind of yellow and orange and and white so i'm just kind of adding those colors as i see fit now i'm going to add a little bit of white so i washed and dried my brush i'm picking up a tiny bit of white to um, add a brightness down at the bottom in through here so just a little bit of white and I don't need much I'm just kind of rubbing it up into those other colors and they'll start to mel meld together so it'll look it'll take on some of those orange and yellows as it goes up so again just a little bit of my brightest bright down at the bottom and then I'm just gonna rub it up into the other areas so this one I would imagine these light these eyes are being lit up by whatever the flame is down here so I'm gonna make this one really bright down in through here and if again you're running into wet paint it's all right just let it blend together and then once it dries you can add on top of it even brighter tones so I know that I'm going to come back and add a little bit of yellow and orange on top of this just to make it brighter but I'm starting with this light um, bit from my white and if it blends into the other colors I'm okay with that I can continue to add layers to make it as bright as I want and then I'm going to do the same thing into here so a little bit of white on my brush and then just rub it up into that previous um, color as it's drying and it starts to 
meld together. And then I would just go back and add any additional brightness I want. So if I want a little more yellow, I pick up a little bit more yellow and I add that into there. I'm gonna do that for these guys in through here. And then you just keep fiddling with it. So you may want yours to dry a minute and then add more to it. You might love it the way that it is. Maybe you wanna add more orange to yours. Wherever your comfort zone is in your bright lights within your um, jack-o'-lanterns, that's where you bring it. So if you want it brighter, make it brighter. If you want it darker, make it darker. And then we are going to be using the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our skeleton hands. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I think I said I was gonna be using my small brush at the end of the last step, but I really wanted to use my medium brush. So I'm using my medium brush. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making a custom tan color that we're gonna use as the base coat, and then I'll show you how to just um, put some easy representational fingers, skeleton fingers on, and we'll do some details on them on a future step. What I'm gonna first do is make myself a custom tan, which I have magically already done. I'll show you how I got to it. So this is the color I'm going for as my base coat. How I got to that was just brown and white. And I would say maybe almost equal parts of both, maybe a little bit more brown than white, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same color as mine. Just something that's darker than white will work um, as a nice base coat. So it will be able to add some good dimension to it. So that looks good for me. So I am going to have my see no evil up at the top. So this is gonna have two hands this way, but of course, maybe it's like this, like this. <laughs> and then that's gonna be the top one covering the eyes. This one is gonna have two hands like this, but of course it's reversed. So you're gonna see the pinky and the ring finger. And then on this one, of course, it's coming from this side. So we're gonna have the four fingers and then the thumb in through here. Really all I'm gonna be doing at this point is just making um, kind of a long rectangle for each uh, up for each finger for each digit and for the wrist bone it, that comes along the side. So in this one, I'm going to have four fingers in through here and then thumbs coming up here with the wrists coming out the side. And what I'm really thinking when I'm doing these fingers is my own hand. On my own hand, my thumb is the shortest. My middle finger is the longest. These two are almost the same length and then my pinky is the shortest. So as I'm building these finger length, that's what I'm thinking in my head. So I've got this one kind of coming over from the far side of uh, my pumpkin and I'm gonna have it kind of bending in through here. In, when you look at a skeleton hand, the, all the fingers kind of converge right in through here, all the finger bones. So there's almost like a horizontal meeting point right in through here. So I'm gonna put that right about here. And then I'm gonna put my, my thumb, I'm just gonna have this kind of curved thumb like that. And then I'm gonna have four fingers. I'm gonna have my first one is gonna kind of come they're, they look longer as skeletons too because we are seeing the, um, the bone that's in here as well. So something like this. And I'm making mine maybe about a, a eighth of an inch wide, half of an inch to an eighth of an inch wide, something like that. This one I think is gonna come somewhere in through here. And, oh, look at that. We can still see a little of the eye once I've got this on here. So something like that. And again, just think curved lines. At this point, I'm not doing anything um, fancy. They might have a little split to them. They might not. So this one is my pinky finger, which might be a little bit shorter than my, um, my ring finger in through here. So something like that will work on that one. And then this one I've got coming over from the side over in through here. It's gonna wrap down like this. There's a split in the in your bones into here. So that's gonna be the split before the fingers kind of meet. And then I'm gonna have my, my thumb in through there. And then I'll have my four fingers. Let's see, let's do, we'll do this one as my longest one. Then we're gonna do this one as my middle finger. So that'll be shorter than this one and then this one's gonna be about the same length as that one. And then I'm gonna do my little pinky in through here. And the set of hands from one to the next doesn't have to be the same. Maybe they should be kind of 
more of an equal length here. Let me make this one, let me make these a little bit longer so they're representation of, of that hand in through there. So it looks like they're from the same skeleton person. <laughs> Maybe something like this. Yeah, that works. And then I'm going to go down to this one. This one's going to be a hear no evil. So we're going to just do a couple of curved lines over on the side of the head in through here. So something like that. And the, the rest of the hand is just hiding behind the uh, skeleton and then something maybe like this and then we'll do the same thing over on this side so maybe about the same height so they look again like they're from the same skeleton person just bringing it down to about the same length down in through here and then up there it's about up in through here so just two skeleton fingers on that one and then we're going to do a just one hand on this one coming across here and covering the face. So we're going to see quite a bit of this arm, of this skeleton arm somewhere in through here. And I'm going to have, let's see, I just want to kind of plant myself for the, where all the fingers meet. So I'm going to put that right about here. My thumb will go here. I will have my forearm area kind of split in through here. And again, I'm definitely not going for a 100% anatomically correct skeleton in through here. I'm just going for something that is representational and fun to paint. <laughs> that, okay, so that's my uh, ring of pointer finger. I'm going to go for my middle finger in through here. This will be my ring finger like that. And then I have my little pinky finger, which should be shorter than my pointer finger. And that's great. <laughs> there's, there's all of my little fingers. So now that I've got that done, we are going to be using this. Uh, actually, we're going to use our, we're definitely going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, make any little adjustments that you want. You can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some bones in our hands. <laughs> I'm going to use my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are white and black. If I need to go into my tan, I will, and I'll let you know, but I think I'm just going to be using some white and black. What I'm in essence going to be doing is doing a very simplistic approach to making all these little bones look like they're skeleton bones. So I'm going to be using um, my black and white to just make strategically placed marks in between my bones and of my bones. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it other than that. So I'm going to start with some white paint and I'm going to paint my bones. <laughs> I'm going to also water down or use a little bit of water on my brush at the same time so I can have some nice fluid paint and I can make these quick gestural marks that are going to represent my bones. So I'm going to put a little bit of just kind of a, almost like a white streak in my, be in, in the middle of my tan areas and this is just going to give me the illusion of a little bit of a bone in through there <laughs> in this uh, part where all of the fingers meets the uh, meets the wrist in through here I'm going to give myself four little um, marks in through there in my thumbs there's three little bones one two three so I'm going to do three dashes one two three and then I do some little horizontal lines so I'm making these like almost the like a uh, capital I letter in fingers. So I'm going to do the same thing for these four fingers. Each of them have four bones, one, two, three, and then four. So I can just split them all with four lines. So I can go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, and you're going to learn how to count in these set in this as well. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to make uh, horizontal lines at the end of each one of these. So just these cute little horizontal lines or lines in the opposite direction like this. And they don't have to be perfect. I'm really just kind of speeding through this to give a nice um, representation of some bones. So something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well. And I'm going to repeat this for all of my hands. I'm going to go ahead and do this one over here. So I have a bone here. I have a bone here, here, one, two, three, four, like that. I have my thumb, one, two, three, 
make my little eye marks. I have one, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to count this whole time, but sometimes when I'm doing one, two, three, see, if I don't count, I tend to not do it exactly as I want. Two, three, four. So know that if I'm not counting out loud, I'm definitely counting in my head. One, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna make my little horizontal marks. And whatever process works for you, like I can just sit here and kind of go across these fingers like this. You can find your own little method to get these marks on here. But just know this is really all just meant to give a cute representation of bones. It's not intended to be anatomically perfect or anything of that nature. We're just going for a nice fun painting in through here. So these two, the finger closest to us, the pinky finger, I'm gonna show all four of those bones, but the finger behind it, I won't. So I've got, uh, let's see, one, oops, that's gonna be bigger than I thought, two, three, four, and then on this back one, maybe I have three. One, two, three. And we'll do our little cross marks in through here, like this. And then same thing over here. And again, you may find a different method to get your bones on here, but this is just gonna be my fun representational way. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, Three. And I'm just doing three on that one so it makes it look like we're just seeing a part of it. So again, just have fun with it. This is not intended to give anybody stress. <laughs> just we're having fun making some, some skeleton bones. And then this one down here, we've got the, um, the arm bone like this coming, wrapping around here. We've got our wrist bone in through here. And then once I've got the... Um, Oh, I need to count. Hold on. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three. See, I, I was going to start talking about a whole nother step, and I'm like, nope, can't do that. I need to count first. <laughs> if I don't count, I will. I, will um, I think I want something in through here, too. This looks like it needs a little bit more structure in that bone in through there. And then I've got four going on. These are long ones. All right, so we got one, two, three. Four. Yeah, those are some long fingers. One, two, three, four. So once I've got this on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wash my brush and then we're going to do kind of a similar strategic thing for the, um, the darker areas in between these little bones and that's going to make um, them have an even more I'm going to laugh when I say this, realistic shape to them because <laughs> we know how realistic we're going for here. But this, again, is just going to give us a fun representation. So once I've got this done, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put black paint on it. I'm going to start up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a um, an outline for the bottom section of the bones. And this is going to give me the iconic kind of um, shape to them. So I put a little bit of black paint on my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and just kind of outline the bottom edge. So I'm, And I can go up into that little joint. So I do a little curve and then bring it up. Think of it like the shape of a dog bone, kind of. And then I'm going to do that on the bottom side of each one. So what that's going to do is it's going to not only give a visual on the correct shape of these little bones, but it's also going to make it look like there's a little bit of a shadow on the pumpkin itself. So it's kind of serving a dual purpose here. It's again creating that little bit of um, a more believable bone shape but it's also providing us with a little bit, oops, I missed a, a finger. It's providing us with um, a shadow. And I'm, again, I'm just doing it underneath or on the bottom side of them. You can use it to clean up any of your bones if you need to, or you can use it as just a really cool kind of detail to it. Uh, if you feel that you need or want anything in this little guy up in through here, you can certainly do that as well. And then again, just gonna do the same process over in through here. 
and again I'm using it on the bottom side so I've got my little bone shape and then I just kind of pull it into that joint a little bit like that and that will give me just a cute little representation of, of a bone. It's a little tedious and it takes a little bit of extra time to give this um, extra little detail but it's one of those things that you know I think it kind of elevates the painting and gives it a little bit more um, I don't know finesse or this you know a little bit more you know thought out detail to it which I think uh, makes you know certain paintings stand out from others when you put these little extra details in it so we could have kept it with just the um, the bones before this black step but I think this just adds that extra oomph to it even in through here I don't really need to do much to these guys I'm just going to kind of um, because they're in the dark as it is but I'm just going to kind of bring a little bit of that black in between the um, the joints again and kind of if I want to or if I can um, increase the the look of those side bones I can certainly do that and then I'll do the same thing over in through here just again using this to um, give me a, a more distinct shape on those bones and you could of course put any kind of hands along these sides if you wanted to make some you know some kind of cartoon-esque pumpkin hands or people hands or scarecrow hands or witch hands that'd be really cool to just give it whatever kind of um, fun interpretation that you would like you don't always have to do what I'm doing this is I, I provide these these creations for people to just enjoy the process maybe stimulate your creative juices and give you you know maybe some ideas to create your own fun um, creations whatever they may be so you can take my ideas and spin them off into whatever ways you want maybe you can use this um, instead of doing a pumpkin maybe you do like a little goblin or a mummy or you know some kind of other fun or maybe it's a witch that you want to hear no evil speak no evil and see no evil so you can really you know make yours into whatever creation kind of creation that you want that's the beauty of painting is we get to you know use our imagination and our creative juices and and create these fun things for people to look at or even just for us to sit and create you know maybe nobody's ever going to see your paintings maybe they're you're just going to keep them for yourself your whole life and if that's the case that's awesome just you know enjoying the process of making these fun paintings is what it's all about and why I started painting in the first place and then once we've got this done we are going to be using this small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna go bottom left on this one with orange paint. I'm using my small brush. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or however you want to sign yours is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really fun and whimsical image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.